face to face, not backing down. These hunt Serbs are out to stop a shoot. This is one of many incidents of harassment that shooters face as antis try to stop the sport across the UK. Former detective Ian Jensen says the most important thing to do when faced with Sabs is to stay calm. Everybody remain calm. It doesn't do anybody any good to rise to the intimidation, the goading or the provocation of the Sabs. And that will come because they'll be filming and they will want a reaction from everybody on the shoot so that they can post it on social media, hopefully get a few more clicks and hopefully get some more um, people to contribute to their cause. Really important that you stay calm that you gather all your possessions, your guns, especially your dogs, and get everybody together. Stop shooting, put your guns away. What else can you do? Basque says shooters can call the police for help. The key message is to de-escalate the situation. So if there's any firearms out, put the firearms away. Don't, de don't escalate the situation. Ring the police, get advice from the police, and hopefully get the police out to deal with the situation as quickly as possible. Ian, who is a shooter, says that if SABs go onto private property, they are breaking the law. After confronting a shoot, it's highly likely that they are trespassing on private land. Now, trespass is a civil offence, really. It's not something the police would generally want to get involved in. But it does play an important part in a number of criminal offences, particularly the one that we will look to rely on, which is... Uh, aggravated trespass and it's very important that whilst you're being confronted by them you have those in mind and you try to uh, to pick off each each and every one of them so that when the police do arrive you can explain to them what you've seen and why that um, completes a case of aggravated trespass. It's really important that the landowner, the shoot captain or somebody in charge of the shoot uh, on camera tells the antis that they are trespassing and that they should leave. There's nothing that we're doing wrong. Everything's illegal. There's no intimidation. There's no intimidation. We're, we're standing here, the police are on the way over. You're trespassing. It's a civil matter because it is a trespass. No, it's a whip because we were, we were stopping a fox hunt who led us to here. Oh dear, dear, dear. Sabs thrive on argument. They want shooters to get physical. It's really not a good idea to um, engage with them um, and to start trying to drag them away and drag them off the land. In law, it does say that you are entitled, after you've warned them that they are trespassing, to use no more force than is necessary to, to, to eject them from the land. But it's really not a good idea. The courts have shown in the past that they really don't like it when people on the shoot get a little bit handy and start dragging people off. The correct level of force to use is a subjective thing and will be poured over at length by lawyers once you get to court. Plus, of course, there's an opportunity for the saboteurs to say they've been injured or to say that they have been assaulted. Ian advises always calling police to report an incident. Even if they don't attend, it is vital to record all the details of the encounter. It contributes to the crime numbers, which the Home Office can't ignore. Make sure that you start recording. If you can, if you have access to a phone, make sure you record what's happening yourselves. Make sure you, you do all that you can to try and capture the faces of the saboteurs, any vehicles they're driving, any number plates on the vehicles, or any, any um, other notifiable uh, marks on it such as have a look inside see there might be letters could be some indication of where the vehicle's from make sure that you call the police immediately the antis appear explain that your group has firearms and that they are being confronted by trespassers who are acting aggressively and causing alarm and distress be very very insistent that the police do attend basque says shooters may have to surrender and give up their day as SABs are persistent. If you've had a SABbing event in the past, then I would certainly think about having a clear plan in place and almost speaking to the police as well and making sure that they have your shoot dates and they're aware that this could happen again in the future. Because if it's happened once, there is a, there is a likelihood that it could happen again. So I'd basically be prepared, be calm, act responsibly and remember that you're the lawful person and the person that's trying to stop your activity is the illegal person. So that's one of the key things to remember as well. Ian says animal rights extremists can be well organised. He warns they will risk arrest in order to continue sabbing your shoot. Why are sabs seemingly so successful? Well, they're utterly committed 
to their cause, utterly committed to it. They hate what we do. No amount of arguing with them, discussing it, explaining why we do it and the benefits of conservation is going to change their mind in any way. And it's certainly not going to change it on a muddy winter's afternoon in a field. They're there for one reason and one reason only, and that's to stop you doing what you're doing. Now, sadly, as we've discussed before, you've got to put your gun away, you've got to behave calmly, pull everything together. And so it seems like they have had a win. For shooters, there is strength in numbers. And like many protest-type groups from that side of politics, they know that if they keep on, keep on, keep on, they will be able to chip away at shooting bit by bit by bit. I think, I can't remember who it said about tyranny. Tyranny doesn't come in one big bit, it comes in tiny little steps and it takes over, it takes over what you're doing bit by bit by bit. And by the time it's taken over everything, it's too late to go back. Which is why it's important that, that we should stand up for shooting. We know, it's, we know it's good for the countryside and we know it's good for conservation and habitat and we have nothing to be ashamed of. From my point of view where grouse moors are concerned, I think that sabin events are happening probably more frequently around the 12th of August. But again, that's because of the media issue. They think they're going to get media interest from it. Overall shooting, I'm not sure there's that much evidence that sabbing events are increasing. These sabs were out looking for a trail hunt. They got lost, changed their plans and followed the sound of gunshots. There may be only a handful of SABs in the UK, but they are organising with the help of social media. Now, whether or not SABIN is actually going up or down is quite difficult to quantify. But what I would say is that social media certainly amplifies the issue. So any SABIN event that happens on a shoot around the country um, can, can be broadcast on social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter or Instagram quite quickly, and then people can see that. And a lot of the time what these SABIN groups want is not only to stop the shoot, but they also want the media attention as well. So if they get in the local paper or the national papers or they get they get a big following on social media, that's exactly what they want. So that will also spur them on. The Field Sports Channel have um, put together a, a small card which every shooter, hunter, ferreter, fisherman, whatever area of hunting or field sports you're involved in should have with you. And it's got all the basic stuff that we've talked about, especially about staying calm and uh, tips for contacting the police um, and really making sure that, that, that the police do their role in protecting those of us that are engaged in illegal activities that are being thwarted by people with no legal basis who just don't like what we do. For more information on your legal rights, what to do if confronted by SABs and to download that card for you to carry, see the link below.